Download the My Hingham app today and report issues and get information on town government with ease. Available on the App Store and Google Play. You can submit service requests or gain information with just a few taps on your phone. Using the My Hingham app puts immediate access to town resources in the palm of your hand, including calendars of meetings and events, agendas for upcoming meetings, building permit filing options, online bill payment options, and info about our boards, committees, departments, and services. For more information, please scan the QR code on your screen. It's November 12th, 2024. Time is 6.15. I'll convene this, this meeting of the Select Board for the Town of Hingham. This meeting is being held in person and or remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023 and all other applicable laws, temporarily amending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Hingham in accordance with the Open Meeting Law. If any participant wishes to record this meeting, please notify the chair at the start of the meeting in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20F, so that the chair may inform all other participants of said recording. Is there anyone recording? Seeing none, please stand if you are willing and able for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I do not believe we have any minutes to approve this evening. So I'm going to move to the next item on the, on the agenda, which is to consider the, consider the request for the Hingham Historical Society for a determination under the preservation restriction related to the old ordinary. Is Deidre online? Hi, oh, yes. Hello. We How see, are you? We see a nice picture, but are you gonna be live with us? We are. Um, let's see. How do you think I do this? Here we go. There you are. Hey. Hello. Hi, Hi. Uh, Select Board. This is Deirdre Anderson and Jim Taylor. How are you? Uh, good, thanks. Deirdre Anderson, 310 Colony Road, Hingham. Jim Taylor, 3 Grist Mill Lane in Hingham. Uh, we're uh, Zooming with you from the uh, a storage room at the Old Ordinary. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, just for the full effect, actually, we're hosting our uh, November board meeting here at the property this um, tonight. So right. um, thank you for considering us um, and adding us to the agenda. We are before you tonight because the town of Hingham. Are you hearing us OK? Yes, we are. We're here you, before you tonight because the town of Hingham has a preservation restriction agreement on the old ordinary as a result of community preservation funds, the society was awarded in 2004 for a drainage system around the house museum. As with CPC guidelines, whenever a community does grant um, a, a organization funds for historic preservation, a preservation easement is put on the property. So we have a preservation easement um, that is uh, unique and um, it requires uh, select board uh, approval of any planned changes um, to the structure. And we are 
planning to take an underutilized workroom here at the old ordinary to and convert it into accessible restrooms. Um, and we are planning to do this with support from a state grant um, from the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism for destination development. And um, in addition to the accessible restroom to service the Old Ordinary House Museum and the Benjamin Lincoln House Museum across the street, it would mean an accessible pathway from our parking lot. And ultimately, given the larger Old Ordinary Campus improvements, we are planning accessible entrances to all three buildings on the property. So, did you, so I'm correct. Just make um, I want to make sure I'm correct. So, the access to the restroom would be both inside as well as through. Um, the exterior modifications to the building, which would include converting a window to a door and um, having an exterior light fixture added. And did the HDC, did they conclude their hearing? Yes, they did. They gave us a, a unanimous support for a certificate of appropriateness. Great. And even though it was not within their jurisdiction, did they review what was proposed uh, inside the house? We did not. We showed them photographs of the workroom that we would be converting, and we shared with them the um, architectural renderings. Um, but we did they, we did not discuss in detail um, the interior changes. So you are the closest we have to an expert on this. Um, what is your opinion in terms of uh, the impact of these internal changes? Thank you. Um, we take seriously any work we do on any of our properties, and um, it is it is our mission. And what the but we also know in order to get the public to appreciate historic preservation, we have to get them in these buildings and while they are visiting us, be able to accommodate visitor needs. Currently, the restroom at the old ordinary was installed in the attic in the 1950s How can and the know? only running water in the old ordinary which makes a difference for right. museum cleaning and is also in the attic this room that we are proposing to convert to a restroom was at one point the meeting room for the hingham historical society when this was our only property in the early part of the 20th century it was an addition to the historic structure in 1933 and has been used over the years as a meeting room, an office, for a short time, a gift shop. Um, it was the original out of the ordinary gift shop. And then for the last 30 years, it has been a volunteer workspace storage room. And that is why we chose it, because it is not part of our historic interpretation of the house. And um, we thought it would serve our visitors best and our volunteer corps to have it on in the main structure, but in a room that was not um, part of the colonial house. Makes sense. So we are going to have to make a finding, if you will, that what's being proposed does not impair the architectural, archaeological, or historical integrity of the premises. Um, I think you've spoken to the historical integrity. Can you speak to the architectural and archaeological? Yes. Architecturally, the exterior of the building um, from the streetscape will not change. And um, in fact, the core dimensions of the room um, will not change. We're not expanding um, any footprint of the, the room. It is because the way it was built in 1930 to protect the collections of the Hingham Historical Society, 
it is a fireproof room in that it, it has ceramic blocks, um, 12 inch blocks in the wall, um, as well as a concrete ceiling and a concrete floor. Um, we are work working with Ben Wilcox and team of Wilcox Corporation, who we've partnered with on our historic preservation projects. And they have um, been able to identify appropriate trenching that would enable us to, um, again, avoid the historic structure of the house and go down um, into uh, the foundation to get the plumbing um, to connect um, to sewer and um, get our electrical as well. So architecturally, the, the core of the Historic House Museum is untouched. And archeologically? We have actually done archeological um, because um, we have a preservation restriction. Whenever work is sought um, in a home with a preservation restriction, and more importantly, is on the state of Massachusetts um, historic inventory, which is called a MACRIS database. We have a form B on this property. Um, we are required to do a project notification form um, with the um, Mass Historical Commission. And oftentimes they require an archeological uh, study, which we needed to do with the property when we did laid the fort in 2013. Um, Again, with help from community preservation funds in the town of Hingham, we moved um, former town historian John Richardson's uh, 17th century uh, fort house to the old ordinary property. And we did um, archaeological spot digs at that location, at the annex and around the um, house. So we are, we've done an archaeological study and unfortunately um, they didn't come up with anything that we were excited for them to find something and they didn't find anything. Okay, thank you. Liz, any questions? Well, thank you both for your leadership and stewardship. Um, I appreciate the explanations. You, you certainly answered all of my questions. Um, so in general, I am in support of making it um, accessible. I think it's, it's a wonderful uh, thing to do for certainly for our, our residents as well as visitors to town. So no other questions. Bill. Yeah, I just want to say that at the old ordinary is an absolute treasure and very much appreciate, Deirdre, how you share it with all of our residents. Everybody in town has access to it, can learn from it. I know that you every year you make efforts to have elementary school students go through there and and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful asset and can't thank you so much for the way that you allow all residents to benefit from it and share with it. Uh, and equally as important, Jim Taylor, didn't you have a birthday yesterday? Am I correct? Uh, I, I did. Yes. Happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday. Uh, happy you. on th 38? Uh, 38, yeah, right? For the, for the 22nd time. <laughs> um, so I will say the, the one question that I have been asked repeatedly is why is it called the old ordinary? I think you have to come on our tour. <laughs> um, anybody want to guess? To get an ordinary meal. Way to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been on the tour. With I want that in the record. Right. <laughs> well and ordinary done. was a tavern. <laughs> tavern. Yes. That's right. Yes. Well okay. Yes, um, uh, any questions from members of the public? Seeing none, I am prepared to take a motion. I will make a motion. Pursuant to section 3B of the 2004 preservation restriction agreement between the town and the Hingham Historical Society, the board hereby determines that the proposed alterations to the old ordinary as shown on the plan submitted to the board for review will not impair the architectural, archeological, or historical integrity of the premises. Subject to appropriate review of all exterior changes, if any, by the Historic Districts Commission. Second. Roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. I am an I as well. You are approved. Thank you all Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Now we move on to police patrol officer interview. We have a candidate, Ryan Hogan. 
Before you bring him in? He's already here. Oh, he is. He's already here. Um, so before you do, uh, if you could just step out for one, just one second. Uh, so I just want to ask the chief if there's anything that you wanted to. When you come up to the t table, yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, if you want to. Table. Yeah. If you want to, anything that you wanted to uh, tell us uh, before we bring him in. You no, know, just uh, the regular process that we go through. Um, just review it real quick. They candidates take the civil service exam. They're placed on a list. When we have a an opening, we contact civil service. They give us a number of candidates. If they're interested, they sign the list up in the uh, select board office. Um, so we went through that process. We got some candidates uh, who went through the process, and we're, we have uh, this one that successfully passed everything up until now. So. Uh, he's coming before you tonight for his uh, select board interview. He already did the police panel interview um, last week. Yeah, we've we've seen uh, the write up, so yes. it was great. Great. Anyone else? Want, either one of you uh, need to add anything? No. Okay. Great. Okay. Great. Okay. Please, if you can have some comment. There we are. Ryan, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks, buddy. Me too. So, uh, well, let him sit. You want to stand? Doesn't We're, matter to me. Would you prefer to sit or stand? Uh, I can sit. If that's sure. We are going to ask you some interview questions, uh, but before we do, uh, you have an opportunity to make a statement to us. And after the interview questions, you'll have a further opportunity to make a statement to us. Um, so please, introduce yourself. Uh, so a little background on me, um, Ryan Hogan. Uh, I grew up in Hanover, Massachusetts. I graduated in 2016. Um, I, when I got out of high school, I worked for a local landscape company um, out of Pembroke for about two years, and in 2018, I joined the Marine Corps. Um, I went to boot camp uh, October 15th of 2018, graduated as a platoon honor graduate. Um, I moved on to the infantry training battalion, um, where I graduated that in April of 2019. Um, I deployed in 2020, um, where I was meritoriously promoted to corporal and took control of a uh, four-gun 81-millimeter motor section. Um, I, I was honor, honorably discharged in 2022, August of 2022, and um, I worked for a, another local landscaping company that my buddy owns um, out of Hanover, and um, as I transitioned into a full-time student, which is what I'm doing now, uh, pursuing a degree in criminal justice. So that's what I do now, and um, things I like to do for fun, I'm a, I'm a part of a, a boxing gym out of uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Um, I like to golf, but golf doesn't really like me back. <laughs> um, but yeah, finding time with family and friends is, is pretty important to me as well. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, I'm going to have you lead off. Sure, yeah. So um, thanks for being here, and uh, appreciate very much appreciate your interest in the police department. Uh, thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, very exemplary, and uh, it's great to always have you know strong veterans apply for these positions, which is Thank fantastic. Um, my, my first question is, where did you deploy to in 2020? Uh, I was a part of a U, uh, unit deployment program. We went to Japan, um, and obviously, as everybody knows, 2020 COVID hit pretty bad. Um, yep. So we were uh, we were supposed to go to the surrounding countries, like we were supposed to go to Thailand, South Korea, but those all got um, canceled. Um, but I had a great opportunity to work with the Japanese National Defense Force and a lot of um, partner forces uh, in mainland Japan, as well as uh, the island of Okinawa, as well. Excellent. And your MOS with mortars? Yes. yes Excellent. Well, um, in, in, the, in the background investigation, your company commander and your platoon leader spoke extremely highly of you, which is, which is very impressive. So that's fantastic. Thanks. So speaking of the military, um, obviously you have a strong military background. What skills did you learn in the military that will benefit you as a Hingham police officer? Well, I think um, the biggest thing is uh, being able to work with a diverse group of people. Um, I, I, you know, like I said, I, I've worked with people from Japan, um, people from the Middle East, from the UK, South America. Um, 
and it was a great experience. Um, I think that, that helps a lot. Uh, leadership, I think, as well. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I, I took control of a, of a, a four-gun 81-millimeter uh, mortar section, which is like roughly around 30 to 40 Marines. Um, so I think a little bit of that, you know, there was a lot of uh, debriefing and planning that I had to do and uh, explain it to other people, as well, other Marines as well. So I think if a few of those things can go, go a long way. Great. So I think we'll do one round and then we'll do Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I'll wait. Liz. Well, thank you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Your thank you. you. You have a very impressive background. We thank appreciate you. you applying. Um, and to that point, you could apply to be a police officer. Are you muted? Office. You were. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start over. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for your service. You have a very impressive background. Um, what makes you want to be a police officer in Hingham? Yeah, um, so... I, like I said, I was a, I was a social work kid. Um, my grandparents grew up in Cohasset, so I was going back and forth from Hanover to Cohasset a lot, obviously passing through mm -hmm. towns like Norwell, Hingham. Um, and I think I originally, I originally would, would have, or I originally would have worked for, um, I was going for Boston Police. And uh, I thought, I, you know, I, I took some time to think about it and I just imagine myself raising a family in the South Shore and instead of, you know, somewhere like the city. Um, and then I got the opportunity uh, when Hingham, you know, the Civil Service Department reached out and said that Hingham was looking to, to hire some, some police officers. So I jumped on it immediately and, uh, and I'm so glad I did. I'm, I'm really happy for the opportunity and, and I'm excited. Excellent. Excellent. So I will say you've done a great job in selecting the color of your necktie. <laughs> it's, it's, you, you know, you know, you're in already. <laughs> um, let me ask you, um, how would you rate your communication skills and what have you done specifically to improve those skills? Uh, I, would, I would think my communication skills are pretty well. Um, I think going back to some of the things that I did in the military, um, uh, I was told by a company commander one time, um, when you're giving a debrief, you want to make sure you explain it so that the lowest level enlisted person could understand. So somebody who's completely green, you know, has only been on the job for, say, you know, a couple months or whatever, what have you, um, so that they know exactly what they're doing, what their job is. So I think um, just continuing to work on being concise um, and, and clear and getting my point across when I speak is uh, things that I try to work on. And uh, I, I think that's, that's about it. Great. Thank you. Bill. Uh, so c community policing efforts is really the cornerstone of the Hingham Police Department, and I would submit to you it's probably one of the best departments in the state that effectively integrates itself with the community and um, does a phenomenal job with making our residents part of what they do as police officers. What skills would you bring to help enhance those efforts, either through your personality or through things you've done in the past? Um, yeah, I think, you know, um, Kind of one of the, another reason why uh, Hingham would be such a great department to work at is because there's such a wide variety of uh, ways you could perform community policing in a day-to-day -day basis. Whether you you know Halloween, you go to a busy neighborhood and you hand out candy to trick or treaters, or you stop at the coffee corner and and have a co cup of coffee with an elderly person you know that maybe you know hasn't had a conversation with somebody in a while. Um, so I think the biggest thing that I would try to bring is uh, just being that friendly neighborhood face. And uh, have people kind of look at me as like a safe space almost, and uh, to be available for anybody, uh, regardless of who they are or their dilemma, um, yeah, and, and try to help them as best as I could. Great. Please. So, we talked a little bit about leadership and communication. Obviously, community policing is is very important to us. Um, what quality do you think is the most important for a police officer? Um, I think probably good character um, and good, you know, good morals. Um, I think you need to be understanding as well. But I think above all, you know, having a good character, good judgment. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're all just people that have similarities and differences. Um, so regardless of what you're going to a call for or what you, you know, have to deal with on that certain call, you know, you're there to listen and figure out what's going on and make sure the community and everybody around you is safe. So Excellent. Excellent. Can you give an example of a situation where you exhibited that sense of character? Um, 
I would say, I think in the Marine Corps, um, I was never really faced with a dilemma where somebody was in trouble. Um, there was a time where um, a fellow Marine, su the suicide rates in the, in the military are, are pretty, pretty rough. Um, and there was a, a time where a fellow Marine was going through some bad times. Um, he had reached out to me, and uh, I tried to help him get the, the help that he needed. Um, and I think that's, that's the closest thing that I had. Uh, and it ended up working out, and he's, he's still a good friend of mine today, so I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, that's so important. And mm -hmm. certainly, um, many of the police calls we have here are related to that sort of struggle or mental illness. So that, that's an important point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to follow up by a little bit on what Liz was asking, uh, but focusing specifically on stressful situations. Mm -hmm. I think you just identified one. Right. Um, but you know, how are you in dealing with stressful situ situations? How do you feel? And can you give another example of how you dealt successfully with a stressful situation? Absolutely. Um, I think I, I handle them pretty well. Um, you know, and I, I give that. I give thanks to the Marine Corps for that. Um, I was never in a, a combat zone, so uh, I can't speak to that. Um, but I was, however, on you know hundreds of live fire ranges with 81 millimeter mortar um, cannons, which you know have a blast radius of about 50 meters. Um, so we did a um, an exercise out west in uh, 29 Palms in California. Uh, it's called ITX, um, and basically what it is, it's a large shoot. It's called uh, Range 400 uh, Alpha. Um, and I had four guns um, firing off 12 rounds a minute. Um, the winds were howling. It was, it's in the desert. Um, and I had to make sure that there was a maneuver element as well um, that we were firing over. So I had to make sure all the gun data was, was correct, um, everybody was firing at the proper time, um, and, that the, and that we cut uh, our fires off as soon as the maneuver element hit their um, objective. So I guess that would probably be the most stressful situation I've been in because I had you know, my friends' lives um, and the lives of the people that were um, assessing us as well. Um, but I'm still here and so are they, so I think it, I think it went well. That's great. Um, so the process that we're gonna follow is um, we're gonna consider your responses and we have information that the chief has submitted to us and we're gonna review that uh, and then uh, in about a little over a week, we're gonna reconvene and take a vote um, to decide on your candidacy. Fantastic. Um, anything that you would like to add? In I think I just wanna thank uh, everybody, especially the members of the police that are here for uh, considering me. Um, like I said before, Hingham would be a fantastic town. You know, Growing up in the South Shore, I would love to you know, kind of give back to the community that I grew up in that gave me so much as a kid. Um, so thank you again, and it was nice meeting everybody. Great. Good Thank to you. see you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry? Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Next item on our agenda is to consider approval of the agreement with Stryker for an automated external defibrillator, actually plural defibrillators, and training kits for the police department. Chief Jones, do you want to uh, tell us what you need? Sure, so these are approved uh, through capital um, for this fiscal year. There is a, a total of 30 uh, AEDs uh, that are replacing our current uh, AEDs that we have. Um, this uh, round of AEDs uh, is consistent with the ones that the fire department purchased, so we'll all be operating the same uh, brand of AEDs, which is obviously important uh, on scene, so the equipment's interchangeable. Um, the other equipment that's listed on there, the, the training equipment and uh, carrying bags and stuff is to uh, provide the officers training on the new, uh, the new AEDs. Are we disposing of any AEDs that are no longer useful? So we're gonna keep some that are still um, operable um, as spares. 
uh, some, uh, was there trade-ins on these ones? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I believe there is some that are being traded in as part of the quote. What it, what's the useful life? Do you know? I would anticipate probably 10 years. And I do, I do know this was, uh, it's consistent with the budget that uh, was planned. For How often are they used? Do you have had any records? That, uh, yeah, I mean, they definitely have been used. Yep. Uh, as far as frequency, I, I don't know exactly how often they use. Okay, great. Liz, any, any questions? Um, is it a different technology, or no, it's they upgraded it's, from the ones we currently have? Yeah, it's the same, same uh, type of AED okay. uh, that the officers are used to. Um, just the, the use of it's a little bit different, and the uh, tracking of it uh, is new, so it allows uh, our medical officer, who's Officer McCracken, to be able to track um, like the battery health and things like that. Okay. So she'll be able to stay on top of things like that with ease. Great. Um, and I know it's covered by capital funding. Um, certainly seems like an important thing to, to have and keep up with. So no other questions. Mr. Ramsey. Um, who, who, so in terms of the training, does Officer McCracken train other members of the department or the fire department come over and work with you on that? Both. Both. So it's mainly Officer McCracken that handles it. Great. Team, I spoke with uh, one of your officers recently who I think he came up on somebody playing tennis and I believe he might have used an AED or he, or he used CPR to save the person's life a couple months ago. And I thought he said he might have used AED, but he definitely used that, this type of first aid to get blood pumping from this person's heart. And he, and he was able to do an effective enough job until the fire department got there, and then and it would save the person's life. So this equipment and having a state of the art is extremely valuable for our residents. So mm -hmm. happy to support it. You don't want it missing in the moment, so. No, not. Yep. Um, Tom, anything you wanted to add? <clears throat> nope, I'm good, thank Great. you. Any member of the public with comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm prepared to take a motion. Make a motion to authorize the town administrator to sign the agreement with Stryker Sales LLC for automated external defibrillators and trainer kits for the police department in an amount not to exceed $69,241.23. Second. Roll we'll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And I'm an I as well. It's approved. Thank you. Thank you. Can, can I just jump in just Please. real quick? Uh, try to get a signed copy before I sign it tomorrow. I will. Yeah. Thank you. I sent it late. I sent it late about an hour ago. Oh, okay. So I'm going to make a copy here. Okay. Okay, next on our agenda is discussion of possible uh, mooring fees, uh, and we have Ken Corson here. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Chief. I'm not used to seeing you out of uniform. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happens every now and then. Give <laughs> so, you maybe refreshing. <laughs> so um, I know comments went out. Uh, I mean, the proposed regulations and the, pro the proposed uh, fees went out. Um, can you discuss with us uh, the responses, if any, that you received? Yeah, we got, um, we did get a few responses, um, you know, just a couple reflecting that might be high and some totally off, off topic. Um, <laughs> that will happen, you know that. <laughs> but we always appreciate comments and, and, um, and suggestions and so forth. Um, I think there are just about 11 of them, so there weren't that, weren't, there weren't that many. And, uh, and those were mainly primarily about the, the fee. Fees. Yeah. Um, the, um, the regulations are basically all done. They've gone through the entire process. So those are, I've gone through the rulemaking process and I'm just notifying you that they're going right. to get published right. and so forth. Right, so there's no action that this board is taking. You've gone through the appropriate process to get them promulgated. That's correct. Right. Just wanted to bring it to your attention. And those are also brought to the attention of the boating community. Yes. And how do you do that? So they'll get published on our website, and then we use we have the ability to email them, so they'll get emails that you know that they're up there and so forth. Okay. But there's nothing that's really going to change anything that they're doing right. or we're doing. It's basically just kind of updating things to where we are from a number of years ago. Okay. And with respect to the fees, uh, I've gotten comments as well uh, that people are concerned about um, 
the increase. Uh, do you have a proposed schedule as to how you see fees increasing over the years? Is it something that would happen every two years, three years, annually? Um, and maybe the, in part that's driven on what those fees are used for, what costs need to be recovered. Just do you have a description of how you plan to proceed in the future? Yeah, so um, I, I just bring it to your attention what the fees are. Obviously, yeah. you make the, you know, you set the fees and so forth. I may rec make a recommendation just to give you some guidance looking at what other communities are. Um, but the goal with a fee, it's, it's not a tax. So what we, what really what we do is we look at what our expenses are and we're allowed to cover our expenses for the Harbor Master's operation through the fee, but it's not really supposed to exceed that. Now, it doesn't mean that every year it has to be a, a break even because some years we have capital expenses and so forth, but overall it should be kind of a, just covering your cost, otherwise it becomes a tax. So in the past, what I've typically done is just every periodically report to the board what the fee is, what fees are in neighboring communities, what our expenses are, and then they've either chose to increase to a certain right number or, or maintain what we are at. Um, we've traditionally done like a, a, a schedule over four years, um, just so we're not coming back two years later to right. kind of revisit it. We can let people know in advance. Um, I guess what I would suggest at this point is um, we're, you know, we need to get mooring permits out and so forth, and I don't want this to be any type of a rushed decision, and we're kind of getting late into the process, so maybe we consider this throughout the next year. and. Um, make a change for the following year? If, if, if the change is right. deemed to be what we want to do. So you would be comfortable uh, without having any additional changes to fees currently and then looking at, at it at our, when it comes up again next year? Yes, yes, Got it. absolutely. Okay, Liz. And I guess it's, I don't actually need a fee, but I'm just reporting to you what the fees are. I don't Got need it. to increase it. It's not something that I'm here saying I need, but I just want you to be aware of what our fees are what our revenues are, what our expenses are, in case you feel as though you want to raise them. Got it. Liz. Excellent, well thank you, Ken. Um, I think I'm more comfortable with that approach and studying this a little more. Um, so I, I appreciate what you said, that the fee should match the expenses, and I would like to dig into that a little more. Um, I know you talked about a multi-year um, mooring plan. We, when I first started. Um, so I also want to revisit that and make sure that we're aligned with what your vision is um, for the mooring field in general. Um, and then, you know, some of the things that I've been asking questions about are what are the services that we offer um, to our mooring permit holders, our transient moorings, um, and how does that compare um, when looking at our benchmark towns and the fees that they're charging? Um, and just what is that whole experience, you know, using the website to reserve the mooring, um, looking into, you know, t a technology like DACWA and just make sure that that's a good experience for, for people. Um, so I think I would feel most comfortable kind of digging into this a little more and, and understanding that holistic vision. Sure, absolutely. Bill. Yeah, well, generating more income is always something I think on all of our minds, but um, I, would, I would not be in favor of raising fees, more in fees or any fees, unless it's a defined need on the other end. So um, I think this is something for us to consider as we move through you know, this year, next year, going forward, but I appreciate your candor in saying that you, we really don't need to do it now. It's something we should consider in the future. So I would certainly be in favor of holding off, holding what we have now, uh, and then consider it when the need arises and we need to we need to increase it. So appreciate your hard work here, Ken, and putting the information forward. You're welcome. I would just um, urge that we, to the extent that we anticipate fees, that we do it in a gradual fashion because mm -hmm. if there are, if there's going to be a spike in costs, um, I'd rather not have a spike in the fees but have them go up on a, a slow incremental basis mm -hmm. um, so that... Uh, the public isn't jarred unnecessarily. Uh, but I, I, um, I take it that the recommendation really is that we not increase the fees right now. And if that's the case, I do not believe that we need a vote since the current fees were previously approved. Correct. Okay. Any comments from members of the public? Can I just make one more comment? Please. Joe, um, I would encourage 
residents and neighboring boaters to continue to send feedback, right? Is that fair? Is sure, to, yeah. And it yeah. should go to the Harbor Master email. Yep. Because um, I am concerned a little bit by the response that enough people don't know about it, and I don't want to be in this position again next year where people don't know and we don't feel like we have enough um, public feedback. So certainly I encourage people to get engaged and, and send their feedback now in advance of a potential decision next year. Yeah, and if we were to engage in this again for next year, we'd probably I'd probably start it earlier. Mm -hmm. I think we started in September, but it get you know the schedules get busy, so maybe we'd start it sometime in the spring. Yeah. So there's plenty of time to to have the discussions and the thoughtful process before we would need to make any change if we did. Great. Yes, I totally agree with that. Thank yes. you. So we will put it on our calendar. Um, so do you mind if I jump please. in for a minute? So I spoke with uh, Ken a couple of times about this, um, and I think what we need to do is work on a cyclical plan um, so that we have a repeatable uh, process that every year, every other year, however often the board feels it wants mooring fees reviewed or Ken feels they need to be reviewed, that we have a regular process with known metrics that will feed that process process and kick out a recommend a recommendation at the end of it that should include reviews of not just the fees but also the services provided um, the okay. software used the you know the modern modernness of whatever process we end up engaging in and if we can do that on an throughout the year process Ken then we identify a date when we want to come back and we have everything is already done every year when we need it to and we're just presenting a known um, process to the board with a with a new recommendation. Um, so that's what I, I think. That's what we can work on implementing. So I don't know that it's a spring as much as a now and through the year work on a work on an outcome now so that we can build this repeatable regular process. Okay. I think we're prepared then to move on, Ken. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks Thanks for you. Being Thank here. you for being here. You're welcome. The next item on our agenda is to consider approval of amendment number three to the agreement with Foth Infrastructure, Foth Infrastructure, and Environment LLC for the Harbor Waterfront Resiliency Project. David. You're having a busy evening. Yeah, thank you. Um, so uh, just to, for a, a quick history um, of kind of where we are now. So this is the amendment number three um, in regards to the Harbor Water Resiliency Project. Uh, uh, the uh, funding and article from uh, annual town meeting of 2023. Uh, the original contract was of June 6th of 23. Right. Um, and then the amendment number two was actually just to extend the length of time. Uh, there was not a value associated with amendment number two. Um, and the contract through 12 months, uh, which was January 1 of 2026, which brings us to tonight, uh, seeking the approval of the proposed amendment three. Um, the term of the contract would be through June 30th of 2025. And uh, the value should not exceed 320,000, uh, 325. Um, if I can interrupt, the document yes. we have, I think, shows June 30th of 2026. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we know what's correct. Of the, con the contract? Yes. Correct. The term of the contract extended through June 30th of 2026. That is correct. I must, I must look. Okay. On the memo and on the contract, it is ending through June 30th of 2026. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I misspoke. Thank you. Um, so the price to uh, not exceed 320325 for a new contract total of 693595 um, And then the uh, funding source also uh, in the memo is Article 24 of the annual town meeting of 2023. Um, 360,000 from municipal waterways fund plus two CZM coastal resiliency grants totaling $521,000. Um, in addition to amendment three is also um, the scope of services 
in the, the addendum as well. Just a general statement to um, JR, who couldn't be here tonight. Um, I did speak with him. This is the planned next step for permitting. Um, uh, if, as we complete this MEPA process, this will allow us to go to the next, next phase of permitting. So um, this is anticipated. This was planned. It's all part of the, the efforts to get our wharf walls um, improved down at the house. So, so David, just turning to the numbers, so I'm clear, the, this particular amendment is for 320325 That's correct. Um, and how much of that is covered by the CZM grant? Is it the 287928? All of it. They're not, but the, uh, the town has to do a 10% match, so. Right, it's the 287928. Oh. Yeah, right here, the 287-928. Right, so we're, we would be responsible for 10% of, of, uh, of the 320. Um, in terms of, but the contract is written as if we are responsible for the entire amount. And I, I, it's my understanding of the process is that the town is in fact responsible for the entire amount and then we recover the 287 from um, CZM. Is that, that the way it works? So the town pays the full amount, then we recoup? Correct. Okay. Yes. Great. Liz, any questions? Um, just related to that. So we're obviously still within the amount that was budgeted between the Municipal Waterways Fund and the grants, right? Um, are we at risk that we will go over budget with whatever the next phase of the project is? Nope. Uh, the, well, the way JR explained it was this is the next phase and this was a planned expense. So. Okay. But Liz is asking about the phase after this. There's no indication that we would be over budget. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And don't forget, there's still an appropriation, an authorization to borrow from a few years ago in town meeting for a, almost $6 million for town pier. So that would be um, some piece of it too. Okay. Um, and that's already been that's already been approved. Yes, yes. That we may need to change the scope at town meeting to expand it, but that was from a few years ago. And that construction, like this, is really the first phase of it. So um, there is that authorization out there. Okay. Yeah, the reason why we need to change the scope is at the time that wasn't contemplated that we would be planning for the entire harbor basin. Right. And now we are. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bill. Are you able to speak to what the next phase is and the timeline for the project? You know, I... I, I, I can wait for JR. Yeah, so what I, when I asked him, I, I believe the plan is to be able in quote-unquote phase one um, will be to bring us from the bathing beach up to the um, mobile station. Okay. Property. Yeah. Um, and then the, beyond that, um, Whitney Wharf doesn't need to be re rebuilt. And then the, the, after that, we're, on, we're into bonds. So it's, there's, a, I think, a three phase total. I don't, I can't definitively tell you, yeah. but it looks like it's that oh, chunk three. in the middle. Great. Um, is this, is this work? Any, any thoughts on timing? Or is it going to depend on? Yeah, so many? timing is important, right? We're trying to coordinate all of this while we're doing the harbor master plan in yeah. the harbor and the 3A road project. Right. So um, timing, the, the harbor development committee is all over it. Um, everybody's, JR especially, has got a, an eye towards timing the state. It's important to the state to make sure that things are done um, appropriately in the right scheduling. So I Excellent. can't tell you right now offhand uh, what months this project is happening versus that one, but it's all being timed together. Do speed. Do speed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I'll note, uh, th well, it's not really related to this. It, we, were, we are very much working on a uh, comprehensive communication plan for the entirety of that work at the harbor. Uh, it's gonna be some disruption, and, um, and we need to make sure that the public knows what is being disrupted and when it's for yeah. alternative and routes and, and right. why yeah. and all that. So uh, we're working on that, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Michelle, this is a question for you. So given that we, um, we're spending money going out and then we're gonna recover, 90% of it from CZM. 
how does that affect our budget if the recovery is in, dif is in a different fiscal year? Um, it doesn't matter as much because it's in a separate grant fund and a capital project fund. Okay. So Ann and JR went through kind of the ins and outs. There's two projects funds that they've been using with this money because the original 360000 was from the Municipal Waterways Fund, as David mentioned. Um, and we actually already have received quite a bit of it from the grant, which is helpful. But it's not the same um, as the operating budget. We have to worry about encumbrances okay. and kind of stuff expiring okay. the, this, the fiscal year. That was year. my concern. Okay. Yeah. It's more like the grant terms and then the capital project fund kind of rolls every year until the project's done. Okay. okay. Great. Any questions from members of the public? Seeing none, I am prepared to accept a motion. I will make a motion to authorize the town administrator to sign amendment number three to the agreement with Foth Infrastructure and Environment LLC for the Harbor Waterfront Resiliency Project in an amount not to exceed $320,325 for a new contract value of $693,595. Second. Roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And I'm an aye as well. We are approved. David, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Really helpful. I know. That's a Thanks, good David. Thank you. Good job. Have a great night. Thank you. Me too. Moving on to appointments. I believe we have one appointment that we're going to consider this evening. Make a motion to appoint Matthew Goulet to the 4th of July Parade Committee for a term ending December 31st, 2025. Second. Roll call vote. Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. And I am an aye as well. Approved. Moving to public comment on items not on the agenda. Are there any comments? Seeing and hearing none, we move to the town administrator and select board reports, starting with Michelle. I just want to thank um, town clerk Carol Falvey and her whole team for all of the enormous hours and work and effort they put in over the last several months planning for and then running a smooth election process. So thank you to her, her whole group there. Now they're in recovery mode. Yes, they earned a recovery, great. Tom. So it's happened. The budget has begun. The budget process has begun. <laughs> uh, we sent out our budget memo last week, a level services budget. Um, and we had our first budget hearing today with the fire department. We'll be meeting with police, the police team tomorrow uh, and all the departments start we start the parade so you'll all be getting um, ha uh, notices or we'll start scheduling um, the department reviews here in the next month or so um, as we get through the process Great. we're on the we're on the treadmill folks <laughs> hey. Tom thanks for for leading that <laughs> the good news <laughs> yes Liz um, excellent well, uh, thank you to the town clerk's office the entire team I echo everything Michelle said is tremendous amount of work um, and successfully executed. Um, I want to say congrats to the state champs crew team um, and good luck to boys soccer and field hockey this week um, and happy Veterans Day to all our veterans. We had a wonderful ceremony over the weekend. Our chair did a wonderful job speaking um, and thank Keith German for, for his service and putting the ceremony together. Great. Bill? I just didn't want to add Liz's comments. Um, the Hingham Youth Football, Hingham, Hingham, Hingham Youth Football, uh, two weeks ago, the eighth grade team, the sixth grade team, and the fourth grade team all won their Super Bowls in the Bay State League. So very impressive that the program has so many wonderful um, teams competing at such a, high, such a high level. It's been a dominant program. I'm very fortunate, fortunate to coach the sixth grade team. My son Peter is on the team and want to extend a special congratulations to those uh, players and uh, and the guys I coach with, wonderful group. So congratulations to everybody. Great. Congratulations. And just uh, wanted to thank all those who participated in the Veterans Day proceedings, the ceremony, uh, our town moderator, um, and really everyone who, who was there. It was uh, a very memorable event. That's all I got. I will accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Roll call vote, Liz. Aye. Bill. Aye. I'm an aye as well. We are adjourned. We recognize that taking time to visit, call, or email our town departments to report issues in Hingham 
doesn't always fit your schedule. Are you looking for an easier way to communicate with the town? Well, now there's an easier way. With the MyHing and mobile app, you can submit service requests or gain information with just a few taps of your phone. To get started, simply download the MyHingham app from the Apple App Store or Google Play, or simply scan our QR code to get the access to the app that's best for your phone. Once you've opened the app, select the Submit a Service Request button. From there, you can choose the type of request you want to submit, whether it's a pothole, a fallen tree, or something else. You'll then be prompted to take a photo of the issue and provide a brief description. You can also use the app to track the status of your issue and receive updates. Using My Hingham puts immediate access to town resources in the palm of your hand, including calendars of meetings and events, agendas for upcoming meetings, building permit filing options, online bill payment options, information about our boards, committees, departments, and services. So why wait? Download the My Hingham app today and report issues and get information on town government with ease.